Hey everybody, this episode of the R&R Show is brought to you by Floodgate Games and their new expansion, Decorum, moving out. And I gotta say, folks, my wife Jen and I were huge fans of the original Decorum. We played it quite a bit, more than a lot of co-op games that show up at our door. And I've actually heard from a lot of people who don't like co-op games that somehow Decorum worked really well for them, and I totally understand why. If you didn't see my original run-through, at its heart, this is a game where each player has their own secret preferences for how they would like their house decorated. And on their turn, uh, they can swap things from one place to another, or they can um, replace things in the house with different things. And um, at the end of every player's turn, even they could repaint the walls if they want. At the end of their turn, because they're trying to make the house just the way they want it, their teammates uh, can say, oh, I hate that, or I love it. And um, that's what you get to go on to try and figure out what their objectives are. And it's really, really clever. Every once in a while, you get to have a heart-to-heart -heart moment where you can give some of the information about what you're trying to achieve. And it's just absolutely brilliant. A wonderful, wonderful um, limited communication game. But what does the Moving Out expansion add? Oh my gosh, folks. Well, first of all, 20 new scenarios come in this box. And I should say, all of them are for two players only. The original Decorum had rules for three and four players, but at its heart, it was best as a two-player game. And this expansion is very much a two-player expansion. But um, not only does it add a bunch of new uh, scenarios, which you would expect, it adds vehicles. Because, folks, we're moving out. And now we have objectives related to the vehicles. And these are just a couple. Our smart car and our old clunker. It comes with a bunch of vehicles that I could show you. I literally don't want to spoil them because they're so cool and there's so much cleverness and variety to them. Um, so, uh, if you get it, uh, you, you can uh, learn more. But there's a bunch of really neat alternate vehicles that have special rules and whatnot. So now we might have objectives of, hey, by the end of the game, I want to have all of my antiques, um, you know, out in the old clunker, uh, and, you know, and I, you know, and these are wild spaces that can take anything. Um, but somebody else might say, you know what, I want all the vintage stuff in the uh, smart car, or, um, or or all the green stuff in the smart car. But that's not all. Some missions might say, and you know what. I want to drive the smart car and you drive the clunker. Uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, things aren't really set up and you got to figure out that sort of thing. But there's more. Some missions might say, you know what? I need to make sure that all yellow objects are boxed up properly, which become like extra storage spaces that go in the cars. But then other objectives show up in the game too. Like, you know what? All the red items have got to be in this cool new plastic bubble wrap. We got to get all of these things bubble wrapped. So um, you might see me put something in bubble wrap um, and you might have a thing where, no, 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 none of the red things need to be in bubble wrap. And I just put that in there because I have to have vintage things in bubble wrap. So you say you hate it. Do you hate it because of the color? Do you hate it because no bubble wrap stuff should be in the living room? And then maybe you move it into the car. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Oh. And then I start to figure out, through process elimination, you must not want bubble wrap in the living room. That's a secret objective you have. And if I can figure that out, you don't have to waste one of your precious heart-to-heart -heart moments explaining it to me. This is the core of Decorum. It's such a clever game. And this new expansion adds so much new fun stuff with vehicles to load up, with boxes, with bubble wrap, with a bunch of uh, new missions. Actually, one thing that does change, in the original game, there was this whole sideboard where we could bring new items in to the house or swap items out. Um, that has been removed because we've added all this complexity of the vehicles. So one thing I actually like more about this new version is every Everything that starts in the house or in the vehicles is all you'll mess with. So it really means you can focus more, but at the same time, things get more complicated with who's going to drive what vehicle. Uh, we can even hire movers who help us and which movers are working with which vehicle as well. There's so much more to the game. Uh, Decorum is going to have so much more life. And by the way, in case folks didn't know, the Decorum webpage is up and running too with daily scenarios that add new, more stuff. And I'm going to assume eventually 
actually will be having um, some moving out objectives showing up on the decorum webpage as well. Very impressive. Uh, takes a already great limited communication co-op and brings it to the next level. I'm really impressed by decorum moving out. An expansion of passive aggressive cohabitation. And now let's get on with the show. And here we are, folks, episode 86 of the R&R Show. I'm Ruel, this is Chris and Ray, and thank you, Richard, for the intro. That game looks phenomenal. I, I love the base game of Decorum, the limited communication, and now the, with the moving out expansion. That looks really cool, and what a way to add stuff, uh, not only thematically, but mechanically, right, with a car. and I love the little bubble wrap that just really... Yeah, that's really that, cute. That tickled me, yeah. So. Yeah, no, I'm super excited for this. I love Decorum. I was, yeah. I think I caught Richard saying something about like how people who, this is a game that even for folks who don't like co-ops, this is a co-op they can get behind. I, that's me. He's talking about me. <laughs> I notoriously hate co-ops, but I love it when there's a fun, especially when there's um like a language barrier or some sort of communication barrier. And yep. this is like yeah. a prototypical, like when I talk about co-op games, I enjoy Decorum is one of the first ones I mentioned because it really does something different that couldn't really be done competitively mm -hmm. oh it's, it's one of my favorite games and this expansion looks really fantastic so i'm, I'm excited for it nice yeah it, it it gets me excited like i haven't played yeah, decorum yet so i know good. you two have played the base game but i i love limited communication mm -hmm. uh and it just feels like it's my jam and i feel like the one thing that i heard about decorum is that some people who are like really gamery you know are like oh it, it feels a bit like you get used to it and it feels simple and it feels like this is an expansion that's like for those people <laughs> yeah who yeah. just like really True. up up level up level like the, the 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 amount of decisions that you can get i don't know yeah. i've never played it but I, yeah I, totally that's what i thought i had uh had had heard and it, it seems uh that gets me really excited like it's something yeah. that i actually want to try i remember like i put i put hanabi on like a great two-player list when mm -hmm. we were doing it two yep. players and this feels like it would scratch a very similar itch so it's something that yeah uh, you could see my face when we came back i was like yeah, yeah you're in more <laughs> I oh you even, should play it chris if you like my, limited my i love communication, limited communication. it's love great it. yeah. yeah um I, I almost put it on my two player list, but I hadn't played it at higher player count. So I was like, oh, I don't know like how different mm. it is. Oh boy, I played it at three players for the first time recently. Oh, it's so chaotic. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, I think that's why I played it at three, four and two. And I actually like the two player experience the best, I think. Uh, I just agree. I because agree. it can get chaotic with uh, more players. And it, it, it feels like it extends the game a little bit, but with this new expansion, it really, yeah, it's going to give you a lot, especially mm -hmm. for that two-player cool. experience. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah, absolutely. Recommend it. Yeah. Very exciting. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. What a great way to start off the yeah. start off the day. <laughs> yeah, this is a great way to start off the day, uh, hanging out with you two and Richard via video. Folks, we've got our top 12 engine building games, and I'm really excited about this list because engine building is one of my favorite mechanisms, and um, I know y'all have some great uh, choices. So why don't we just kick things off? Uh, Chris, let's lead the way with number 12, please. Yeah. Uh, first, I do want to establish how we all oh, made yeah. our list. Yes. We we mentioned this right a little bit before in the pre-show. Yeah. We said we we're gonna we we're talking about it now. So I do want to talk about it now. For me, uh, my criteria was because there's a lot of different like engine building. There's it's I find it so strange on BGG. There there isn't even a category. No, nope. I looked for that as building. well yep. because like, it could just wild. be anything. Could yeah. be um, it could be so much, right? Yeah. So yep. for me, I I tried to think of like classic engine builders. Uh, and I try to think about uh, sort of a definition as you have a set a set idea of actions or things that you can do that become <clears throat> either optimized or uh, more diverse and more uh, delicious as the game mm. progresses. That's kind of what I did for nice. my for my list. Trying yeah. to keep it in that in that range. Yeah. No, I think that that's pretty on par with what I did as well. For me, like the big thing for defining engine builders, because I, I had that's funny you brought up the BGG thing. I had mm -hmm. the same moment where I was like thinking, and I oftentimes like to like when we did food games, right? I like people will make BGG lists around themes that yeah. we often end up using on the show. So I'll just like get my mind thinking about stuff I maybe would have forgotten about. Yeah. For right. Sure. So I went to look up engine builders on BGG, and you're right, it's not a tag because I think it would just get genuinely too messy because it is. Yeah. Like when you boil it down to like you get a thing and then that thing helps you later in the game and you keep using it like that sounds like every board game ever. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's <laughs> about like the God, it's so it's so hard to describe, but you're like yeah. using this. You're like it builds upon itself. It's something that you use every round or during a certain action that constantly 
increases and like per, like produces more like production yep. based mechanics or something where what you do early on that card kind of defines the rest of your game because you're going to build upon that it's really hard to define um and yeah. i think i think we came up with a list of games that i would absolutely classify as engine builders but god even yeah. i regret even <laughs> opening my mouth because in my head i was like yeah i'm gonna explain what i was thinking and then as i'm explaining i'm like that makes no sense yeah. no, it but makes i think you'll sense. see it makes perfect sense. yeah it totally i think makes you'll sense. see in our list yeah. the commonality between the yeah. games and yeah. you can kind of distill that mechanic from there yeah and i think you hit it on the the uh, nail on the the head there or ray uh, the whole it's, there's no category in BGG because it can, yeah. it is like super like nebulous. It's like, oh, is this really mm -hmm. an engine builder? Well, this is, but this may be. It's one of those uh, uh, mechanisms, I guess, that uh, you can apply to so many different things. But at the heart of it, I think we know, it's one of those, like, we'll know it when we see it. You know it. Right? it. Yeah, it's okay. exactly. That's an engine builder. And, uh, but yeah, so I'm excited to see <clears throat> what we've got uh, here. Uh, Chris, let's get back yeah. to you with number 12. Okay, well, I'll start it off strong and wrong with number 12. <laughs> uh, no, strong and right. Uh, this is a game that I need to pick up a copy of. I've only played other people's copies of it, uh, but I really, really enjoy it. It's, it's, it reminds me, I've been playing a little bit of Lego Fortnite recently, and uh, it reminds me of that. Oh, uh, Lego Anno... Fortnite so fun. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Uh, this is Anno 1800. Um, there's a lot of cool things that I could talk about this game. Uh, this is designed by Martin Wallace. Uh, I talked to Martin Wallace. Uh, I, I interviewed him for, for the World Series of Board Gaming, and we were talking about design and concepts of design, and he said that this is a game where, like, the first pass, he knew what the game was. He had mm -hmm. it at, like, 90% done on the first pass, and he turned this game out in, like, three months or something ridiculous in That's terms crazy. of the design yeah. process for something that is so involved. Uh, and, and it is to emulate the computer game and the, the, the video game of it. And he also said he paid a friend to play the video game for, like, so many hours <laughs> to make sure that, like, he could, he could awesome. distill the feeling of the game nice. for this thing. What, what I think this game does really cool is, and, and the reason why I, I attribute it to, like, like, Lego Fortnite, is you have certain steps which you must do to create other things. Mm -hmm. So you, in order to build something, you need the wool and you need the wool to create the sweater. And then you need a sweater oh, to yeah. create the so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And it's chaining all of these things together. And so as you're building, you're, you're actually not in the same sense as a lot of engine builders, but you're actually unlocking possibilities, right? Like things are, things are physically impossible and mechanically impossible for you to obtain without the prerequisites beforehand. And so you're choosing these different paths. I guess you could kind of think of them as tech trees in a sense as well. Uh, mm -hmm. There might be a little bit of a meld there, but I, I feel the engine building nature of it because they're all sort of combining together and you're using those to complete objective cards. There are a bunch of crew uh, or, or people who want certain things. And every time you get an additional like worker, which you need to go out and do the stuff, they want something else as well. So you start with like six cards in your hand. And and when I first played it, I was like, ah, I'm going to be done this so quickly. Was like, you think that. And then you're constantly <laughs> getting more and more because you want to do more stuff. But you have to complete these tasks. So every, there's a really awesome give and take of, of when do you end the game and, and how much do you try to accomplish? Because the game ends when somebody has fulfilled all of their orders. Uh, it's, re it's really, really slick. It's a really nice game. Uh, yeah, I think I have... Uh, in in my own Discord, in the Room and Board Discord, we've got we've got we're talking about our top ten games that we played last year, and this is on that list for me. Uh, it, it, I I hadn't played it before last year, and it's just really stuck with me. Super solid. That's our number twelve. Yeah, really, really good choice, uh, Chris. I and th that's what I love about this list. I wouldn't. I would not think of Anno 1800 or off the top of my head as an engine builder, but you're totally right. You need this stuff to do other stuff and you're and unlocking. slowly yeah. unlocking. And yeah, um, I, I, I really enjoy this game and I'm glad that you put it on because it reminds me, I need to play it again. Um, I've, I don't have a copy as well. I've only played friends copies yeah. and every game I've played two or three players. I think that's only clerk as I've done wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, Martin Wallace. I mean, he puts out some good games, folks. You may know yeah. that name. So, uh, <laughs> might put out, you know, a the few. number one game. Like a on gamer too. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. periodically. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, let's uh, move on uh, to our number eleven, which I believe is mine. Is that correct? It's it you? is mine. Yep. Yeah. And uh, let's get ready to go here. Um, so, 
Number 11 on the list. This is a newer game. Uh, this game came out, I think, end of last year. And for whatever reason, it just really... It was just my jam for, for whatever reason. It just really stuck with me, and I've loved it ever since I played it. Uh, this is a game called Nar. K-N-A-R-R. -R. Is it Nar or Kanar? I'm not sure how you say it. I think it's Nar. It is Nar, right? It's probably um, Nar, so okay. let's call it Kanar. Let's call it Kanar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, yeah, so Nar is um, a game of... Uh, now, here's the thing. I wasn't really that big on the theme, but the art is really cool. Uh, it's Vikings. Uh, you're gathering a crew of Vikings, um, assembling them, and then eventually you're going to go to destinations to, you know, get more points and whatnot. But what this does, I really love how, I don't know, just streamlined this is. Uh, you are playing cards from your hand into your tableau right in front of you. And as you do that, you are going to take, if I play like my yellow Viking, any previously played yellow Vikings, I'll get those actions as well. So maybe one will give me a victory point, one will give me a resource, one will give me something else and so forth. And then... Um, I can take a Viking from the main tableau here. Let me skip the video where we can take another look at it, Richard. Um, and I can add that to my tableau and um, add more, uh, get more Vikings. But then eventually I want to get those destinations at the top. And those are going to cost me the Vikings that I've collected. You're sending them out on a des uh, on a trip or missions to go out there and get more points and uh, visit these great lands. And what happens is... Yes, I got the destination, but no, now I've lost those Vikings. So my engine has uh, needs to be rebuilt. So I no longer have the engine of Vikings, but I do have more points and whatnot. And what's cool is one of the things that you do, not only you're trying, it's a race to 40 points. Uh, so it's just a straight up race, but you have these uh, things in addition to the Viking cards, you're going to go up this one track that gives you ongoing points. Like so, uh, you build your engine of points. So if I play the right Vikings, you know, early, then maybe I have like, I can start scoring one, two or three points around at the start of every round that really builds up. And also I can build up things where I get extra Viking cards, more um, points and uh, these, uh, the other resources, which are helmets and, Oh, I forgot the other one, uh, helmets or bracelets. And that'll allow me to do cool things like with the destinations that I have, which is Richard Short right there, those destinations, I spend those resources. I can get everything in what each of those rows. Uh, I love, that about this there's so much more going on uh in nar or kanar as you as you may call it uh in such a little package this is a small box game but those cards are all tarot size they just they fit them in mm. the, the box i think it's such a one of those perfect like hey we're not going to waste any space in this there's no wasted space there's no wasted part of this game this game is tight it's streamlined it plays in about 30 to 35 40 minutes or so for two to four players one of my favorite engine building games of recent times and also one of my favorite engine building games of all times. That is NAR. Yeah, this this game, I've only had the pleasure of playing this game a couple of times, but I, yeah, I have nothing else to add. It's great. It's I The art is really beautiful as well. I do feel like Vikings at some point get kind of overplayed, but I do yep. really like the uh, direction they went with the art. And those tarot size cards are lovely. And yeah, it doesn't overstay its welcome either in length or in size. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I love this. this. is a great pick. I wouldn't have. I don't know why I didn't cross my mind to put it on this list, but that's a great pick. I'm glad you. I'm glad you put it on there. Yeah, thanks. I, I'll be. I want to be perfectly transparent. It was not on my list. It was on my mind recently, but I literally had the box next to my computer. I was like, you know, that's going to be on my <laughs> list because I love that game and I totally forgot about it. So uh, no, yeah. I made it on there, and um, I think you put it perfectly, Ray. It does not overstay its welcome. Like it's, you know, mm -hmm. some engine builders like sometimes you want them to be. Oh, this is sort of a drag. Let's, you know, I wish it would be soon and sooner. Mm -hmm. Other engine builders like, oh, I wish I would have had more time to work my engine and I mm. wanted the game longer. I feel like this is that sweet spot. It's like, yeah, I got to do all the stuff I had to do. Plus the game is over and now we can play something else. It's just perfect. Yeah, nice. that's God. That is, that's such an interesting, and this is a little off topic, but that's such an interesting thing you brought up that, that, um, push and pull with engine builders of wanting to get the joy of running your engine, but not wanting, like not wanting to get bored with it. And it's good engine builders know when to cut it short. And that's, yes. that's a theme that I was just thinking when you said that, I was like, Oh, 
yes, the, the engine builders I ended up not putting it on my list, and we can talk about that in the post show, yep, were yeah. because it, it either hit one of those two. It either wasn't quite long enough for my engine to be satisfying, or it overstayed a little bit. Yeah. So I just, I like the way you put that. That was in my brain, but I hadn't like articulated it yet. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And you mentioned yeah. uh, the extended edition of the show. Folks, be sure to click the link below. You can see all the fun stuff that we do before and after we record the YouTube show here on our Twitch channel. So click on the link below and you'll get to see that. Um, that's true. You might even see Ray spoil uh, an announcement <laughs> that does uh, probably drop today, right? So you can say yeah. it right now because oh, there's right. everybody who's right because there's no one in chat. We don't here. have 122 <laughs> people watching us record yeah. this live. So Those you, people you don't exist. Say it. You could say it right now because this is being put out on YouTube when yeah. the announcement has happened. Yeah. Right? I, will, I will. announcement from the op. <laughs> I'll, I'll sneak it in here in case you don't watch the post show. Go check uh, right now when you're watching these. Go check the op social channels. We announced a board game today. Yeah. And, and that was what? What? Which was the one? Uh huh. And one next up is number ten. That's me. Perfect. I'm going to be talking about the next game on our list, <laughs> uh, which is Wingspan. This is one of those games yep. in my mind that I think is the prototypical like engine building game. Um, I have talked about this on this channel before. I did my whole spiel about how I love this game. I love what this game did for the hobby. I will spare all of you and not say all of that again, but that wasn't our top, I think, top 10 Stonemeyer games. I talked more in depth about why I love Wingspan so much. But in, mm -hmm. for our purposes here in this context, this is Wingspan. This is obviously Elizabeth Hargrave's like masterpiece mm -hmm. um, where you are going to be drafting birds and putting them into one of three habitats. And this is where the engine building comes in for this game because those individual habitats are going to correlate with a certain action. So the top one is getting food, the middle one is laying eggs, and the bottom one is drawing more bird cards. And whenever you take one of the corresponding actions, you are then going to activate the abilities on all of the birds that you've played in that habitat. And the way there's really good synergy between the types of birds that live in certain habitats and the corresponding action, right? So for example, the water habitat lets you draw birds. A lot of birds that could live in water habitats involve tucking excess bird cards. So you can really, what I love about this is you can really push one particular strategy because of that synergy between the bird cards and the habitats. This is just, this is just a great engine builder. This is such a literal engine builder. When you think about it, you take your cube from one side of the board and you go through all the birds that you've played throughout the entire game in that habitat. Um, and it's just, it's fantastic. I love this game so very much. And it's a great introduction to engine building as well, because of how like tactile and visual it is like you start at the right you take your little cube you go across it's a very good uh introduction to a relatively complicated and as we've already discussed sort of hard to define uh mechanic and this is wingspan you probably all know wingspan so i'm not going to talk any more about it but this is a great example of engine building i yeah. i love the point that you talked about ray about how tactile it is that's so true yeah. like i I oh I love teaching this game because it seems like it's really easy to get to see folks with if they've not if they don't know the game there's that moment like you just show them hey just move your cube or whatever mm -hmm. down here and they go oh that oh okay, you know so good yeah yeah because really like an, another that. game I'm going to talk about on this list that I won't spoil but requires you to remember a lot you have to kind of keep your engine in your head a little mm, bit what I yep. like about this is that you can't forget any step of it. it it holds your hand in a way that's really yeah. nice for beginners so yeah that's Agreed. that's wingspan yeah. i think it's a great I think, example i think wingspan sort of is the is the example for engine yeah. building right like that's yeah. what i think of you're you are optimizing the actions your actions are getting better as you go along <clears throat> mm -hmm. like that it is it is such a great definition of kind of how i was like basing my list it was you know yeah. in the honorable mentions of course yeah. Mm -hmm. um yeah i've been wingspan is one of those games where like gamers really latched onto it and then they go oh i've played it way too much i need to be like i don't want to play wingspan anymore but when you think about it it's a, it's just a really good game I like yeah. yeah i will i love it i never so, get yeah. sick of it i so. i love it and the expansions for it are really good as well i talked about mm -hmm. that again more in mm -hmm. the the stonemeyer video i talked about which expansions i like more but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah for me for me i always find like for, for wingspan i think because like my girlfriend really likes playing it so we played mm -hmm. a lot and like I, mm. I like to play a whole a whole lot of games mm -hmm. but like fair i i was i i just commentated on the, the world series of board gaming like wingspan final for this year that was oh, a fun cool. thing. I, was thinking, I had to i put together like the i was looking at like wingspan strategy tips on world series of board games youtube oh. channel i've been doing like strategy guides for yeah. all of oh the, all that's the games, fun just like top five yeah. tips and so like to i also talked cool. to yeah the, the wingspan one should be coming out this week um oh, yeah. but uh, I, I talked to like the Wingspan champion and uh, 
and I'll spoil, I'll spoil something, right? <laughs> so we can all spoil together. Uh -huh. the, the, number one tip, the number one tip is like play those those early bird cost, like those cheaper cost cards first because, yep. um, because they, they chain together. But what, what I really liked was pick the action that doesn't go in the row. So if you're drawing, mm -hmm. if you have a yep. bird that draws cards, make sure it goes in either the right. So you egg, can like you level, level up action, your food ability by having one bird that lets you get a card just for free. Yep. Totally. Yeah. And totally so even just absolutely. thinking about that and thinking about the strategy, <sighs> I'm on a wingspan high right now. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I can't wait That's to play awesome. again because I'm That's like, awesome. ooh, I can't wait to try out these strategies to see like, <laughs> what I've learned from watching like yeah. high level oh. players play. Yeah. yeah. That's, so That's really play. cool. I feel like it does kind of get sometimes not a bad rap necessarily, but because it was an entry game for a lot of people, mm -hmm. it gets classified in that gateway game category. Yeah, and I sometimes really gamers yeah. are like, oh, wingspan. Like there's a lot, yeah. especially with the expansions, and when you really like play that game to win there's there's yeah, yeah. i don't know i oh, think yeah. there's more strategy there than people sometimes give it there's credit for yeah um so i'm excited i'm gonna be watching that video chris that sounds yeah. awesome yeah. yeah can't wait okay uh great choice let's move on to number nine we've got richard lined up to give us number nine richard take it away all right all right okay very exciting engine building has got to be one of my favorite things in all board game although it's a weird esoteric concept that i think is hard for some people to get their heads around i mean it doesn't even have a uh, uh a category on board game geek uh and yet i think it's one of those uh, you know it when you see it sort of thing although not everybody does because chris Anno 1800 is a lot of things. It's an amazing racing game. It's a great goods conversion game. It's a wonderful, at its heart, worker placement game. But I don't see how it's an engine building game. So I'm looking forward to um, seeing your description of how you would consider this to be an engine building game. It's worker placement. The thing doesn't run on its own. Everything that happens is because... Anyway, regardless... I, I look forward to the description. However, Ruel, Gnar is a phenomenal uh, choice. I love that one a lot. A little on the light side, a little on the small side. I kind of wish the engine building was driving something bigger than just set collection at its heart, but so, so sharp and it's such a brilliant little game. Uh, absolute gem. More people should get their hands on this. And Ray... Wingspan made my short list, quite frankly. I feel like it should be on my list instead of yours. Uh, but um, you ranked it uh, just a little bit more on your... And, and, and But it's so cool. Three simultaneous engines in parallel. One feeding the other, feeding the other. Absolutely brilliant. It is the engine building that is what makes Wingspan so absolutely phenomenal and so well-loved. Um, but uh, we're going to move on to number nine on our list. And Chris, uh, maybe uh, this would work for you too because it's fun fair. And Chris, this is what I'm saying. Officially, I think I'm just going to assume your um, yours was unfair because I know you love unfair as much as I love fun fair. And yeah, at its heart, this is an engine building game. We are, you know, uh, grabbing cards, playing them to an engine, you know, our own little, uh, you know, uh, theme park. And at the end of every round, we run our engine. We run that theme park and generate a lot of money so that we can keep on building bigger and bigger. It's a pretty simple engine building game where um, you know the engine only does one thing, but you do run it over and over and everything is about trying to uh, puzzle all the pieces together to make the most successful engine possible. And it's absolutely brilliant. There is so much to recommend in this game. So much replayability with all the different um, theme park themes that you can throw in all the different objectives. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. And on top of that, it's just got a great presentation too. So, number Number nine on our combined list is uh, Funfair. And I don't know, maybe number 12 is unfair. I don't know. Looking forward to seeing uh, the uh, video. <laughs> Thank you, I mean, Richard. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled that Funfair made it on the list. I'm thrilled that un, like Unfair is represented. I love Unfair. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't. I actually haven't played Funfair, but I've played the fun version of Unfair because yeah. my girlfriend doesn't like what I'm mean to her in a game. Uh, she's like, stop messing with my tableau. I just want to do my own thing, and you're targeting me. I'm Valid. like, I know, because I know you have that blueprint, and I don't want you to get 99 points in the Alien expansion. Right. There's one. There's one that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I I think Anno 1800 is significantly larger in the engine building than Unfair. That engine that Richard's talking about, you run your engine, you get income. 
That's what you get at the end. You run your, all the people come to your park. What do they give you? They give you income. That's it. That's all. You have event car. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Funfair has revolutionized the engine building genre. I don't know. But in Anno 1800, one of the best engine builders out there, uh-huh. you know, I feel like, uh, you know, maybe it should have been, maybe both Unfair and Anno 1800 should have been on my list. Um, but uh, I feel like you, you're unlocking more possibilities to, to complete with your objectives through that uh, that unlocking of different stats and chaining things together. And yeah, I'm stretching, but I don't think I'm stretching as much as, <laughs> as Funfair. But honestly, <laughs> don't care because Funfair or Unfair, phenomenal, phenomenal games. Love them so much. Yeah. And so I'm not even mad. They can appear <laughs> on any list and, I, and I'll, I'll go with you, Richard. I'll justify it. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go through those leaps. <laughs> nice. I love the extra spice today from uh, Chris, folks. Extra, <laughs> extra spicy Chris is my favorite, uh, Chris. Um, Funfair, I've, I haven't played it either. I've, I remember playing the Unfair and it, it fell flat with me and my group. Um, uh-huh. So well, maybe, well. yeah. Maybe that, I need to play Funfair. I don't, I don't know, but um, I yeah, know a play lot of either. people enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, they're so good. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. That was our number nine. And <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to turn it back to Chris for our number eight. Well, you want to talk about engine builders that are real engine builders. <laughs> Feast your eye popsicles on these next ones. Um, the, the This is actually a real engine builder. Uh, this is this is this is my this is my honorary where splendor could have fallen. Uh, I decided to opt for something a little bit um, a little bit that that takes splendor and kind of tweaks it on its head. It's not Century Gollum. That's no gross. It's Project <laughs> L. Um, yes. Project L is the one that we're talking about as our number eight. Project L gives me super splendor feeling vibes, but you also have polyominoes. Uh, you have mm-hmm. a bunch of different. Um, tiles that you can complete, objectives. There are sort of black cards, white cards. They all have different sort of shapes that you have to fill in. You can see them at the top of the screen there. And uh, on your turn, you can do a number a number of different things. The idea being that every time, like Splendor, every time you complete one of those cards, like you purchase one of those cards, you get an additional polyomino that you can then incorporate into future cards. And so on your turn, you're choosing to like put down your own polyominoes, level up your own polyominoes, or take additional uh, cards that you can complete and uh, chain into other things. It's really, really slick in terms of how you're building your pool of resources and the ways that you can build that pool of resources. Uh, kind of like Anno 1800, I guess, you know, if we were to classify them. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 it's, it's really, it's really like the tools that you have on your disposal get more efficient in terms of how you can, how, how they can access things. Uh, how they can uh, complete things because they're larger, what shapes they are. And uh, it's it's really solid, really fun. It's a bit expensive for, for my cheapy old me tastes because you've got like the really mm-hmm. nice plastic pieces. It's nice components, yeah. It's really nice components uh, and because you, you've got to like slot them in to the cards mm-hmm. too and you want to just like lay them down. And so like the, the production quality is really nice, which also comes with a, a higher cost, um, which... Uh, so like I I would probably opt for Splendor too just because like Splendor is cheaper. Mm-hmm. But I I didn't want to I didn't want to put Splendor on it on the list because I I feel like again Splendor Splendor is one of those things that that feels sort of quintessential. We might have been talking about this mm-hmm. in a pre-show or or before we, we got did, on I stream. Yep. Um. But um. Yeah. It it, it Project L kind of hits that hits the same similar feeling right and in terms of time that it takes uh, decision space that happens and it's really solid. So that's our number eight Project L. Yeah, this is a, a fantastic choice, Chris. And uh, just to point out in the video, this is the one I run through I did for the channel. This actually included the finesse expansion. So there's some mm. stuff at the very uh, bottom here. Uh, those are like in-game goals. Uh, so that's what it adds. But the base game, and I, mean, I, I love I've loved Project L for years, Chris. It's like one of those yeah. games for the longest time I thought it was like so underappreciated. And then the company yeah. actually went out of business, but they came back to life thanks to Kickstarter. And like now you can get the game again. Um, so yeah. really excited about that uh it is a pricier than splendor but i think it's worth it it combines two of my favorite things tile lane and engine building and uh it, it's it's so good and um have you been able to play the uh expansion uh, chris or any of the expansions i think i have yeah and they added more pieces too right yeah. are there like white and black pieces yep. are those expansion pieces yeah so i think yeah. i've played with those yeah yeah what, what i like best about the expansions you add these things and it's not like making the game 10 times longer or 10 times more complicated it slots in so nicely and yeah um, I, I love expansions like that and i, I Project L, I'll 
a favorite from the get go for me. I, I absolutely love it. Great choice. Nice. I, I I've actually, I've never played Project L, and it's actually a great shame for me because I oh. worked with the designer. He oh. works for CGE. Adam Spandell no is one of. It's just like an employee at CGE. Oh. Um, he published this independently um, outside of the company. I've never played it. <laughs> and there came so a point bad. where I, I like, you know, that point where you're like, you, you say like, oh yeah, as if you've played it. You don't officially confirm, but then everyone kind of assumes you have, and then at some mm -hmm. point you just like run with the lie forever. <laughs> um, that's me and Project L. I've never played it. I think I'd love it. I love polyominoes, but it, it yeah. became an awkward, <laughs> awkward thing where I just I couldn't I couldn't stop. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So it that's the continues. big reveal that's happened yeah. on this stream. Is there you go. <laughs> we have we have raised big reveal. There it is, folks. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Great choice for number eight, Chris. Let's move on to number seven, uh, which is going to go back to me. Uh, this one is another favorite of mine, a longtime favorite. Uh, it is, um, what is it? Uh, it is Fantastic Factories. Uh, this came out a few years ago, um, and I've enjoyed this from the get-go. It's, you know, along with Tile Lane, we we're just talking about Project L. One of my other favorite things to do is uh, card draft and also dice uh, placement. And uh, that's what you're doing here in Fast and Fantastic Factories. Uh, you're drafting cards to build your little row of factories. Uh, so you got a little tableau building as well. And as you do that, it's going to give you unlock spaces for your dice to uh, you know you do extra actions with your dice by placing some of your new buildings. You have some basic stuff on your player card, which will get you resources. And it is a race to I believe 15 points. Uh, so it goes by pretty quickly. It's about a 30 another 30 minute game. I mean, y'all know how much I love these streamlined games that give you a lot to do. And, 30 to 45 minutes and fantastic factories does it so so good so on your turn you're going to draft uh one of the building cards or you can um draft a contractor for hire those are the ones where they give you a special ability for the round and then you're going to eventually roll the dice place them to gather resources then convert those resources uh into your uh factories and different buildings those will start pumping out hey like an engine will start pumping out more resources and or points which you'll uh, hopefully get enough by the end of the game uh to uh hit that 15 point mark first um richard here is playing the solo uh version another a uh, pretty solid version i think it was a little i don't know the first time i played it was a little clunky but it took me a little while i figured it out i was like okay yeah this is not a bad solo version i still prefer it two to four players but it plays so quickly and so smoothly uh fantastic factories that's our number seven game uh for our best uh, top uh engine building games yeah this is a great pick rule this is Thanks. another one where i'm like that's engine building yep yeah totally <laughs> right <laughs> and yeah, I, I, a really great quintessential yeah like, yeah that solidifies the definition too which i like i like doing with this list especially when it, it was so so wide and open mm -hmm. i love that that richard said the same things that that we were talking about too right like that <laughs> just shows that right it's uh yeah it's fun it is cool okay uh let's move on to our number six and ray's got this choice for us Yes. Okay. So my number six is a game that I love that I feel like doesn't get enough love. And this is like if Wingspan were the thoughtful, calm, meditative engine building, this is the chaotic cousin uh, that nobody talks to. And that is uh, Whirling Witchcraft. Nice. I adore this game. Uh, Whirling Witchcraft is a sh pretty relatively short little game where you are going to be witches casting spells. And on your turn, you're going to pick a card, you're going to pick a spell and place it in front of you. And then simultaneously, everyone is going to activate all of the spells that they have. So that's the engine building. You're going to be slowly building up this tableau of spells and then activating all of them. And what is a spell, you ask? Great question. So a spell is a card where you're going to take ingredients from your workbench and put them as the input to the spell. So in order to cast, like, I don't know, uh, the raining frogs or something, you need to have two mandrakes and five frogs. That's a lot, but whatever. It would have a certain amount of ingredients that you take from your own personal workbench. You put it into the input section on the top of the card. And then once you've done that for all of your spells, all of your spells create an output of some other different combination of ingredients. So maybe that flying frog potion or whatever creates uh, two mushrooms. Then you're going to collect all of the outputs, all the output ingredients, put them in a little cauldron and pass them to the person on your right, who then has to take all of those ingredients and put them onto their personal workbench. If at any point you get a cauldron of ingredients and there's an ingredient type that you don't have space for anymore, that ingredient becomes a point for the person who sent them to you. 
So this does such a cool thing that I really, really love. It's a little mean, it's a little swingy, but it's short, so like I don't mind it at all. There's this fun tension where you are trying to build the best engine of spells that you can, where you can create as many ingredients from like the stuff that you're being sent as possible so that you can overwhelm the person to your right. But you're also trying to deal with all the crap that the person on the left is sending you. Because if you've built this great engine that just makes a ton of mushrooms, but you're being like, you're not being sent the correct input ingredients, you need to be really adaptable. And it's so fun because it's this cyclical turn cycle, right? Where you're sending stuff to the person on the right, you're getting stuff from the person on the left. And there can be, if you want to be kind of mean and meta about it, you can kind of like, gang up on people by starving someone of the ingredients they need for their engine. It You can get really fun. Again, it's a little swingy. It's a little chaotic, but it's super short. It's crazy how quickly this game ramps where you're like, man, this is easy. I have so much space on my bench. And then all of a sudden, boom, someone sends you seven mandrakes out of nowhere. And you're like, oh God. And now you have to re- route your entire plan to just be a mandrake like <laughs> uh like crisis management system where you just need to draft all the cards that consume mandrakes because you're being overrun with them this game is so good i think it's it, the reason why it's so high on this list even though i love wingspan so much is that this is really interactive engine building mm. so much can be just like multiplayer solitaire where you're just yeah. staring and watching your little thing go this is so inherently interactive and chaotic Oh, I love it. Maybe other games do this as well, but this was the first game that I was introduced to that does this sort of roundabout interaction with the engine that you're creating. You have to be so adaptable and that's a really fun um, thing to be pushed to do in engine building. Cause so often, like even with Wingspan and some of the other examples, you get into like, I'm going to be the egg person and you just do that. And there's no external reason to really stop doing that unless you maybe don't get the cards you want. This is so interactive and great. Yeah. And I just ranted about that. I'm out of breath now. I love this game. If you haven't played Whirling Witchcraft, oh, it's beautiful. I love it so much. Yeah, I haven't played it. Oh, oh Chris. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. I feel like people don't talk about it enough. It's, I, yeah. It just kind of released under the radar. Yeah. Um, I such totally a good agree little with game. you, right? It's so underappreciated, and I absolutely adore this game. Um, it's uh, Chris, you got to play it. The, this is the, the best description I ever heard I of do. this game. When I first learned it, they said, you know, this is the, a game of... Remember that classic I Love Lucy episode where they're making the chocolates in the chocolate factory? And it's going... All the chocolates are coming along the, uh, the belt, and they're trying to put, you know, store them. But eventually, there's gonna be, there's a point where Lucy and Ethel... I don't... Did you all ever watch I Love Lucy? Or is this like... Deep. I'm a child. Okay. But you know what I love <laughs> I know, Lucy is? I know. Was, I know I love Lucy. Yes, okay. I, I can imagine. Okay. Yeah. So Lucy, uh, eventually the, there's this uh, conveyor belt of chocolates that they need mm -hmm. to put in boxes. And they start coming in way too fast. And uh, she's mm -hmm. just like started throwing them around, started eating them. That's what this game feels like to me. It's yes. Lucy, the Lucy episode. Yes. And because you're getting all this stuff, you're trying to get rid of it at the same time. And eventually there's going to be that point like, okay, game's over because I don't have any more yeah. spaces for the Mandrakes or whatever. Um, it's a, an engine building game and also like I guess engine building slash engine wrecking because you're eventually wrecking yeah. someone else and you're trying to just ruin you're like yeah, hey I see yeah. this engine you got that looks really nice yeah. what if I sent you a bunch of crap that you just <laughs> you can't put anywhere uh, exactly like you, you can it, it forces you like if you do have this perfect engine that just like consumes a bunch of frogs right if the person yep. to your left is smart they will reroute to send you none of what you what you need, send you no mushrooms, yep. and just send you a ton of frogs, and you've got to like <laughs> exactly. dismantle and figure out something else. Yeah. Oh, I love it. No other game like has it that feeling. Great. Exactly. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I love it. I think. Yeah. Um, it's well, one of those games too. I, I remember hearing one of the developer I, when I uh, play tested it. One of the developers said like on average it's only like five or six rounds. It's like super quick. And, yes, it really, and that's it really super wraps fast. up. Like the first two mm -hmm. turns, like, okay, cool. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> the third round is like, oh no, I've got all this on my plate now. What am I gonna do? Uh, it's so good. Chris, you I think you'd love it. Oh uh, well, yeah, I gotta totally. say, like I you can probably see my expression as Ray, as Ray was talking about it. It's the same as decorum. Like there that's two games where I'm like, I think I would love this game. Oh, yeah. Like I yeah. think I would love Worthing Rich Crow. I think I would be really into decorum. Yep. There's something that happens in my brain, I'm like, oh. Oh, a new little treat for me to discover. <laughs> this good little trinket. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it feels. Yeah, I'm. I'm sold. 
I'm nice. sold. I'm buying it right now. Okay, yes. I'm going to the store. There it is. Play, play Richard Ham. What has he got to say? <laughs> Richard, what do you got for number five while uh, Chris goes by his escape? Okay. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Aruel, we are so simpatico. Fantastic Factories definitely made my shortlist an absolutely phenomenal game, made even better with the expansion. Well, one of the expansions. The other expansion, I'm not such a fan of the kind of cutthroat take that one, but even just the base game of Fantastic Factories is such great engine building fun. And um, Ray, Whirling Witchcraft. Honestly, I have to admit, I didn't even think of that, but that's a brilliant choice. Um, so smart and m so much more player interaction in that game than most engine builders, which can often be kind of a solitary. Everybody's just focusing on their own little engine. Well, here, uh, my little engine is so directly impacted by the engines of my neighbors. And plus, of course, the uh, closed hand car drafting too. Uh, really, mwah, chef's kiss choice, I have to say. Good call. And Chris. Okay, you're doing better because... I don't know why Project L is uh, refers to itself as an engine building game, and it's often called an engine building game. Although I do not believe it is an engine building game at all. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you get your things back, and you can do that turn that lets you spread a whole bunch of stuff out. But that's it's 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 not an engine building game. But they say they're an engine building game. They put it right there on their box, so. I'll let it go. But um, uh, enough uh, complaining uh, about Chris's choices. What's number five on the list, folks? Honestly, I am surprised it wasn't on anybody else's list. It's Earth. And yeah, I know Earth made my last, um, uh, you know, top r and R countdown as well. I can't help it, folks. The game is just that good, and this is one of the best engine-building games of all time. It's in my top 25 games of all time. If it's an engine-building game in my top 25 games of all time, of course I'm going to talk about it. Um, and more than just being a really great example of engine-building, it's such a smart one, because you're building this grid of cards uh, that represent flora and fauna of biomes, and you're trying to get these cards all laid out because they want to be next to certain things, or in certain rows and columns for scoring and all that. But uh, you also get to run your biome engine, which means activating all those cards, or I should say all the cards of a given type. And you do them from top left to bottom right. So that becomes another element in how you're laying all these things together. And it is so smart and so brilliantly puzzly. And then on top of that, there's a million other things about Earth that make it great. But it is also one of the most clever and innovative um, engine building games of all time, quite frankly. And uh, yeah, of course, it has to be on the shortest of short lists uh, for engine building. Okay, back to you, gang. Yeah, Earth. I'm going to be straight up. I forgot about Earth. I, I don't know why. I don't. It wasn't in my mind, first of all. As How could you build? with Richard mentioning it every, <laughs> every episode? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, you can. I mean, you can either bring people unique, interesting ways to develop <laughs> and enrich their experience of certain mechanics. Or you can just, you know, rely on the same tricks over and over again. I don't know. I don't know which one you'd want to do. I was thinking the whole time. I was like, dang, how can I pretend Earth isn't isn't an engine builder? Yeah. Like, I guess the follow mechanic is like a bit strong, and yeah. like the tableau aspects of like laying down. Yeah. But it's true. Your 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 powers get better over time. Yeah. So I couldn't I couldn't discount that. Yeah. So I had to go the other route. Yeah. And I just <laughs> attack just being Richard mean directly. To Richard. <laughs> yeah. it's just attack his personal credibility. Attack. Personal yeah. attack. Personal attack. Thank you for having me on your channel. Here's what I think of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think for me, <laughs> I, I do think about that tableau more, <laughs> but it is it truly is an engine. Yeah, board. you're right. It's a tableau. One. It's a yeah. tableau. Tableau. Yeah. Engine? Never never seen it. <laughs> yeah. They don't even have they don't even have gears in Earth. It's all nature. <laughs> right? Yeah. Where's the engine in that one? <laughs> Oh my God! Goodness gracious! Uh, great choice, Richard. Thank you for that. And uh, Chris, why don't we uh, continue with our four, uh, number four game on the list? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this one Richard won't have an issue with, and I'm very oh. disappointed. Oh no! Because no. It's, because I'd love to keep the streak going. Um, this is a game about uh, getting a bunch of different stuff on your science fair. Who knows the theme? There are fun marbles. It's gizmos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> gizmos Gizmos is a fantastic quick little engine builder game. Again, that sort of same vein as Splendor. It gives, it gives the same feel as Splendor. Uh, you have four different actions that you can take. There are a couple more, but those are kind of passive actions. 
There are four main actions. You can take marbles from the pool, the little row of marbles that are out there. You can spend the marbles to buy something else. You can reserve a card uh, and you can research a card, which is just better than reserving, uh, where you get to look through a number of cards and uh, put, file it away as well. Uh, but every time you build one of these machinery, you get points and you also get uh, something better on one specific action. It's that cascading actions. It's optimizing those actions. It's making the actions that you're taking more and more effective. You start out by doing one thing by picking a blue marble, and then you pick a blue marble, with the, which lets you draw a random thing from so-and-so, which lets you file something away. And then you filed something, so you get to draw two new marbles. So I pick a red marble, and then the red marble lets me draw another random one. It, it cascades in a really, really satisfying way. Um, and, uh, it's, it's really solid and I'm, I hope, I hope, oh, I hope that Richard for somehow, somehow has a, has a, a some sort Something of bad to say about it. state that happens <laughs> because uh, it's not gonna happen, but it's really, it's really, really good. Uh, production quality is great. And the, the having the little rings to hold the marbles is clutch. Yeah. Um, yeah. so that they don't roll off the table, like well fought plays super quickly. Uh, it doesn't overstay its welcome. You're just ramping up, and then it's done. It's great. Yeah, I, I'm so glad you put this on the list, Chris, because one of my favorite designers uh, did this game, Phil Walker Harding. Praise, Praise be. be. Thank you. Praise be. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it's just a, it, it's such a wonderful, literally, you have all the gears and stuff, and you're mm -hmm. building an engine, like, at least in my head you are. I mean, I know it's like gizmos or whatever, but to me, it's like yeah. just, you know, uh, yeah. engine building. Um, I don't see any flora or fauna right? up in there. Or birds you know what or, or whatnot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, a fantastic game. And uh, the the bits too, very nice touch with the marbles and stuff. And mm -hmm. I remember when this first came out, uh, Potion Explosion was all the rage. So mm -hmm. me and my great game group were like, oh, Gizmos, this is the next Potion Explosion. Nothing like it at all. Nothing. Two totally different games. Just the marbles. Yeah, yeah. just the marbles. That's <laughs> it. But yeah, great choice for number four. And I hope Richard doesn't have a problem with this one because I think it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he does. I hope he does. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, let's move. We got our top three now. I'm going to move on to um, um, the number three game, which comes to me. And uh, we'll see if uh, Richard has a problem with this. Um, it is a game that came out a couple of years ago. Is my favorite from a few years ago and i think it's fantastic um and i didn't think of it at first as an engine builder but over the years uh my my stance has changed i feel like it it is um and it is our number three furnace uh this is a game from sure. arcade wonders where the where at least for me when i first think of this game i think about that auction bid uh mechanism right because you're auctioning to get all uh, the different cards uh resources and whatnot but you know, after the auction, which is just a small part of the game, you're going to line up those buildings in your tableau and run them eventually every round to get resources. And that's where the engine building part is, right? So as you uh, select those, you run your engine, get resources. It's only four rounds, so it's it's quick. But again, we talked about this earlier in the show, how it doesn't outstay its welcome and you still have the satisfaction of running your engine. Um, so I really love this game. I should point out that uh, for those that sort of like, I mean, they, I know a lot of people I liked it but didn't love it as much as I did get the expansion the interbellum expansion folks is fantastic it really adds a but it adds like complexity and depth to the game without again without it being overbearing you're just adding uh some new asymmetric abilities uh which are the manager cards which give you the, either an on a one time or an ongoing uh, bonus or ability and then they tweak the the uh auction uh element just a bit where you all have your you know one two three four uh disc and you're still going to put it on a card and you cannot put it uh, like the same uh, color or the same number on the same card. But they have an extra disc that everyone gets, which is variable. So you, what you can do is spend coal and say, if I have like 10 coal, all of a sudden I have a 10 bid disc, which will hopefully get me the card that I want. So it's a really cool element that they add. And I love it. I still love the base game. I think the base game is fantastic. Again, it plays in about 30 to 40 minutes. That's my wheelhouse these days. That's the uh, type of game I want to play and, um, with the auction element. And the engine build element, it just it just sings to me. This is a, one of the uh, fantastic games of the last few years. And that is our number three collectively, Furnace. That's a great choice. When uh, I forgot that you put, I saw the list in advance this time. And I was like, oh, 
what a great pick. I wish I had put that on my list. And then I forgot that I said that. And then when it came around again, I said, oh, what a great pick. I wish I had put that on my list. And then I was like, we, we, we've been here before. Um, I think you're exactly right. The, the the bidding element of Furnace is awesome. It's spectacular. But the engine you're creating, there's it's the it's 50% of the game. Yep. You, you need to chain your stuff into other stuff and ramp it up so you can get more points. And I, I agree with you. The Interbellum expansion is great. Uh, I... I, I'm going to put out a review on Furnace on my own channel like very soon. Nice. So I've been playing a lot of it recently. Uh, it, it's fantastic. The playmat is also really good. Yeah. I'm not a playmat guy. But it fits yeah, Ar Ar Arkham Wonders has been doing a really nice job yeah. with yeah. Agreed. production quality and playmats and mm -hmm. stuff for their games. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, fits right in the box, and like it's it's very helpful because you lay out a different number of cards depending upon the people, mm -hmm. like two, three, or four, and it's just got the little spots and little faded outlines of like three yeah. players and four so players. Nice, yeah. and it's just one of those things where I'm like, you know what? It's not necessary at all, but like it it really I I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I and Furnace strangely plays really well at two. A bidding game that yeah, plays well at two I agree. is so never, surprising to me. Yeah, um, but like, yeah. yeah, I quite enjoy it. You just have an automated sort of opponent, and in the interbellum, you get you get that opponent has a potential to win. Yeah, so it kind of elevates it. You can do like a, maybe a solo mode, and you can mm. also cheese it a bit. They roll a dice, and that's where they put their card on like one, two, three, or four, mm. basically, like the what which whatever number of card. And if they can't put it there, then they go to the next one. Mm. And so I was like, okay, great. There's a, you know, 78% chance that I can get this disc onto the place where I want it to be so that I can get the reward yeah. underneath it. And it felt very good to be able to like predict that sort of stuff. So yeah. great choice with Furnace. Thanks. I got very excited about yeah. it. So love, 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 love the game. Uh, we've got two more to go. And Ray, you've got our number two on the list. All right. Number two is going to be Terraforming Mars. Ares Expedition. This is the standalone rework to the original Terraforming Mars. And while I think both are great examples of engine building, I just perf I just vastly prefer Ares Expedition. I think it's tighter, snappier, faster. The, uh, the original Terraforming Mars I find to be a bit bloated. Um, and this is just, it looks prettier and it plays faster. I find it a much easier teach. But if you're unfamiliar with uh, the concept of terraforming Mars in general, basically we're space capitalists who are here to make Mars habitable for people by doing various like global goals, right? Like raising the temperature of the planet, increasing the oxygen content. We're all doing various things to raise these communal goals, but we're space capitalists. So we want to walk away from this communal goodwill with the most money and the most recognition. And that's your goal in Terraforming Mars. And you're going to do that mainly by playing cards. It's like this gigantic deck of like 200 unique cards, which is wild. And it's one of my favorite things when I show it to people for the first time. I'm like, look at all these. They're all different. It's so cool. Um, and the thing, the engine building part of Terraforming Mars is that those cards, a lot of them, sometimes they'll be one-time effects, but lots of them will increase your production of various resources that you need for those global goals. They don't give you the resources like finitely in, like themselves. They increase your production of those resources. And that to me is engine building, right? The more of the like plant production cards you make when it comes to produce, the more plants you make. And that is really, really fun. And Ares Expedition has this really beautiful dual layered board where you're moving your production up on these nice little tracks. Oh, I just, I just love this game. Um, and yeah, that's, that's Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. I think it's a great example of engine building. This is a favorite in my house. This is my partner's like favorite board game, period, full stop. Whoa. So I play this game nice. a lot. I just introduced it to some new people last weekend and... Yeah, it's, a, it's another great introduction to engine building and multi-use, like, not multi-use cards, but like unique cards. This idea that yeah. like you may never see another animal card for the whole game because there's so many. <laughs> right. uh, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, a a yeah. fantastic choice. I, I'm, I'm the same way, Ray. Like I love Terraforming Mars, the original. But after a while, especially when you play Terry's, uh, Ares Exposition, you, it is bloated. It takes a while. Like I would... I remember when I was in the turn for Mars, they finally released Prelude Expansion, which is absolutely mm. necessary when you play that game. But then they came out with Ares Expedition. It's like, I'm not going to lie to you. That's the only one I play now. I love Ares yeah. Expedition. And including, yeah. like, it, it, not only everything for everything you said, but also uh, it gives you that um, uh, Roll for the Galaxy 
style um, uh, action selection. You're gonna, you know, select. Oh, I didn't even mention that. Yeah, I yeah, that's that one of brilliant. the biggest changes yeah. from the original terraforming. Whereas, if you're unfamiliar, instead yeah. of everyone going around taking individual turns, mm -hmm. you all will at the start play an action, call, like a card that represents an action, like production, for example. Yep. And then everyone, depending on like what like action cards people played, everyone does all of those actions. So, like if Chris and I both play production, and Ruel picks like uh, the card draw action or whatever then yeah. everyone's going to do production and card draw but we're not going to play any cards because nobody selected that action and you get a yeah. little bonus if you're the one who plays that particular yeah. action card which yeah. i think is really it, it cleans it up it makes it so much faster Agreed. so much more approachable for new players absolutely um yeah 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 i i i contemplated putting aries expedition on my list too I would, I feel like Ares Expedition feels more engine buildery to me than Terraforming Mars does. Than the original, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. like Terraforming Mars, I didn't consider as, as like an engine builder. I know people kind of reference it. Yeah. Sort of the tableau building, you're kind of getting your tags, your engine, your actions that you get to do are the blue actions, right? And I always mm -hmm. find that like, unless you're really going for that strategy, sometimes you don't even really have to engage mm -hmm. in that aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I find with the follow mechanic of Race for the Galaxy or Earth of the choosing and getting a bonus, uh, I find with that in Ares Expedition, it feels like to me there are more cards that allow you to do stuff when the action is chosen. Yep. Mm. It just kind of feels that way a, a bit yeah. to me. I, I, I okay. guess it's it's not really because you have the blue and the red, like you still just get to play the card then. But it, I think with the production, like you're saying, it, it just it feels it feels more engine building to me. I think that's exactly it. Yep. And so yeah. like in terms of putting one forward as being more engine buildery than the other, it's it's this because it is again, it that's why it feels like a much more solo experience too. Mm. if I play this game, I play mm. this game, my friend Zach, I was like, well, See you at the end. See you at and the then, end. Yeah. You don't even have that game. area control of the original game. <laughs> yeah. You're really just like, yeah. see you in two and a half hours. <laughs> and then and then I looked up. I was like, hey, how was your game? He's like, yeah, it was good. I was like, cool. Thanks for coming over. Goodbye. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's just I'm hyperbolizing to some extent. But um, yeah, I think I think that also you know lends itself to that that format a bit more. Totally. Yeah. Totally. So. Great Thank choice. You. Great choice. Let's uh, see what oh, we've got on the Richard. top of the list. <laughs> I am uh, sure he'll hate it. <laughs> uh, we'll see. <laughs> Richard, what do you think of our choices and what do you have for us at number one? Oh, good choices, everybody. Uh, well, once again, you and I, we're... F we're practically mind melded. I'm reminded of the fact that once I said in the R and R show, "You complete me," and yes, you do. Furnace is so brilliant, and most people think of it as an auction game, but it's an auction that lets you build an engine. And if folks, if you play Furnace in the hardcore mode, where once you've laid a card down, you have to play them in that order, I, I mean, you'll never be able to go back. I mean, Furnace is brilliant either way, but oh man, the engine building in that game is so incredibly crunchy, and yet. So so simple and pure and elegant. Everything about Furnace is brilliant. Um, I Honestly, maybe it deserves to be at the top of this list. It, we're going to evaluate as an engine builder, but it's also, also, not for nothing, an amazingly brilliant auction game, too. Uh, one of the best auction games of all time, one of the best engine building games of all time, makes Furnace one of the greatest games of all time, period. And then if you throw in the Interbellum expansion, oh, man, don't even get me started. And then Ray, Terraforming Mars, Ares. Oh, good choice again. Those blue cards, the more of them you get out, and the uh, that's an engine you're building that you get to run, and it can be so satisfying. Although, interestingly, you can pretty much ignore that. I mean, it's an engine building game where you don't have to build much of an engine at all, which I guess is kind of unique and interesting and uh, uh, noteworthy as well. And just absolutely phenomenal. And Chris... Bravo! You came up with an actual engine building game. You pulled it off right there at the end. Gizmos is definitely one. Um, seeing as how you make uh, grabbing the the uh, you start upgrading certain actions like grabbing red marbles, and then every time you grab a red marble, you run your red marble engine. And um, but of course, the reason for this game to exist is that little marble tray. It is so nice and charming and lovely. Uh, a great little gateway game. A great intro to engine building, quite frankly, and I am very happy to see it on the list. Speaking of lists, before we get to the number one, uh, folks, you know, we're not done yet. Uh, this uh, is the R and R main show, but there's an extended edition you could go watch with uh, fun hijinks with uh, Chris and Ray and Ruel getting into stuff, and also in the post show of the extended edition, you can hear additional. I'm going to give you a full top ten. I'm only telling you about three today, but I've got seven more I want to tell you about, and that'll be in the post show. Links for it down in the show notes. Don't miss out on it because engine building again is one of my favorite topics of all time. But uh, enough dilly dally, enough preamble. Let's talk about Manhattan. 
Manhattan Project Energy Empire. Uh, the greatest. I mean, this game is my number 12 highest ranked game of all time. And it's an absolutely brilliant worker placement game about trying to meet the energy needs of a growing population of the modern world um, it's got so much to recommend. It is, at its heart, a worker placement game. But the thing is, when you send your workers out, either to an industrial, a government, or I think commercial, those are the three worker placement zones you can place your workers in to do various and sundry actions. But the thing is, the more industrial cards, uh, you know, uh, industries you invest in, um, the brown cards, I think that brown was industry, if you have a bunch of brown cards and then you do an industrial action, you and not only do you do the core action on the main board, but you activate all of those cards you've invested in. So um, you make, you can have three different engines you're running, and some of them are stronger than others, and you're constantly balancing all this stuff. I talked about how Wingspan is brilliant because it's got these three parallel engines, and this one has it in a different way um, where the engines are supplementing an existing worker placement game, and it's absolutely brilliant. Again, one of the greatest games of all time. Um, I cannot recommend it highly enough, and and uh, so much variability built into it. Uh, but the engine building is, oh, is just perfection. Uh, the worker placement is really clever, too. The you know unique player uh, powers. Oh, there's so much to recommend here. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to throw back to you folks. And I hope to see you in the, uh, the post-show, the extended edition, because i got more to talk about. Okay. Uh, thank you, Richard. Folks, those are our tw top 12 engine building games, and we want to thank you for watching. We're going to um, end things here because we record this live on Twitch um, every mm -hmm. every week or every other week. And, of course, this time we are running late. So we need to head over to the post show. You can watch the post show by clicking on the link below for the extended edition. We talk about a lot more games, so come on and join us over there. Uh, Chris, Ray, thank you again for hanging out. Always a pleasure. And on that note, we're going to take off, and we want to thank our uh, sponsor, Flood Games for sponsoring this episode of the R&R &R Show. Until next time, folks, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.